Well, pitching is one of my least favorite things to do in this video. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we are Cameron Pictures. I'm Amy Cameron, Tassie Cameron, and we have <laughs> tips for writers. Why you, why now? Think about the, what the personal connection is to the idea. So it's like, why we? Well, because I have to write about this. I'm the only person who can write about it this way. It forces me to get much more personal and that I am comfortable doing sometimes. But without that, personal connection, it's very hard for people to connect to the material. And then the why now of it is I mean, self-explanatory, but it's, it's like, I need to make this idea and this is why it needs to be now, I think you need a really good answer to that. If you're pitching your idea, being able to answer those questions is helpful because even if this project doesn't go forward, even if that idea doesn't get into development, by answering that question, you are giving um, the producers or the broadcasters a sense of who you are as a writer. And also helpful actually in job interviews, being able to say, this is why I'm amazing for your show, and this is why it's a perfect time for me now to be involved. You really need to be able to communicate your passion for the idea. I've had people come in that have completely changed my tune on whether we go with them or not because they were so passionate and so articulate about why that. So I think it's incredibly important that people reverse their pitches and then and then forget that. <laughs> and because what you find in the process of pitching it um, and writing it out and and then reading it aloud several times and then trying to memorize it and then ditching it, that exact process, what it means is that you know you have the spine of your idea down pat. You will have some phrases that you know will get a laugh or that you know will get people interested or will prompt a question and you can always go back to that. So no matter how sidetracked you get in a pitch, you always have a, a spine of a story to go back to and allow it to be an organic conversation, but, but to go over it again and again. And if you do it with friends and people that you trust, they'll bring up questions, things that you don't even think that you're missing in a pitch, like how old your character is or what time period it's set in. Those are things that are incredibly important to nail at a pitch because anything that takes the audience's mind out of what you're actually talking about diminishes your pitch. So you want to be able to give them the right information at the right time. And I think the way the best way to do that is by practicing. You do this all the time. It's it's practice, right? I do, and I, which I find excruciating. I have to find people to listen and I hate doing it, but I do it. I force myself to do it with as many people as I can. I get nervous, no, so I bring a piece of paper in, paper in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with me, and I, you know, I've had to just learn to be okay with that. The fact that I, you know, I can't kind of do a big 15, 20 minute pitch cold with no piece of paper. No, I mean, you can bring the pitch. In. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm in. saying. Yeah. If you, if be aware of your own limitations. If, if yeah. you're not a performer and you need to rely on it, be okay with that. So uh, we hope that this has been of some help to you guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>